Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are going to take a look at a really interesting uh, small production, kind of last ditch pistol from the Spanish Civil War. This is the Izard, I Z A R D, uh, named after kind of a species of antelope in Spain. And these date all from early 1938, where they were they were set. They were manufactured by the retreating Republican army or Republican government, Republican faction of the Spanish Civil War. When the war began, uh, several of the major Spanish pistol factories were in Republican control, Astra and Star, and they were able to get some armaments through those factories. Well, as the tide of the Civil War turned against the Republicans, they lost ground and they ended up losing control of these major established arms factories. And at that point they had to come up with some sort of replacements. They needed guns. So they took a look at what areas they did control and what kind of resources were available and looked into where can we start manufacturing guns. And there were a number of different designs that they put into production. Um, probably the most commonly known are copies of the Astra 400, uh, the RE and the Oscaso guns. But one of the others was the Azard. So these were manufactured uh, in about the first half of 1938 in Barcelona, and they only made tops 300 of them. And every single one of these guns is just a little bit different from all the others. And what's really remarkable about them is that they are, they look like 1911s, or star copies of 1911s. They are chambered for 9mm Largo, but they are simple blowback actions. And just wait until you see the recoil spring that's in these things. So. Let's pull these apart. Let's take a look at how the production actually changed over the course, because we've got four different ones here, starting at number 13, uh, and there's there's some interesting changes. So let's take a look at that. To start with, of course, this looks very much like a 1911, and there's 1911 for comparison. Obviously this has been stylistically copied from the 1911. Now uh, a lot of the people involved, the actual technicians and uh, machinists who are making these pistols, uh, for the Spanish Republican forces were ex-employees of Astra and Star. Star of course had manufactured what was basically a copy of the 1911 in 9 Largo. So um, the idea that they would copy the 1911 makes a lot of sense. These guys were had uh, experience with that style of design. That said, these are not mechanically copies of the 1911. These are actually blowback pistols, which is really kind of kind of crazy. So let's go ahead and take this one apart, and I'll show you how that works on the inside. Disassembly is really easy. There is, we have a, a normal slide stop catch like on a 1911. Uh, it is retained very much like a Tokarev, so we just have this uh, spring-loaded little spring steel catch. Pull that off, pull the magazine out. Uh, the magazines for these are unique to the Azard, but they're basically copies of the Astra 400 magazine. Now technically uh, you should probably take the spring and bushing out, but if I just pull the slide back to here I can then push this slide stop out. Get a grip on it there. All right, so the slide stop comes out and then I can pull the whole slide assembly off the front of the gun. Once we've got that, we can then pull out the recoil spring and the guide rod. At that point we can also take out the barrel bushing and the plug at the front. And then we can take the barrel out. This one's a little tight at the front. Slide it out and right here no locking lugs. And a matching no locking lugs on the inside of the slide. So, so to put this in perspective, here is the recoil spring in the barrel from the Azard. Now if we look at an, a proper 1911 barrel, it of course has recoil, has uh, locking lugs cut into it. And even as a locked breech pistol, it has a substantially longer recoil spring. Now, the Azard, of course, is blowback. If we want to give this a true comparison, well, the suitable gun in blowback in 9 Largo is the Astro 400, and that is the recoil spring from an Astro 400. There is a massive difference in uh, scale and spring force between these two. 
And this, the Azard, would be, once you know how it works, that has to be a terrifying pistol to actually fire. Uh, it will very quickly beat itself up and become either non-functional or outright dangerous. In addition, most pistols like this, in fact virtually all pistols like this, will have a disconnector here which forces the trigger bar down, like so, and out of, basically out of engagement if the slide isn't fully closed. So normally you would see a, a bar that can travel vertically, and there would be a matching cutout in the slide right here, so that when the slide was fully closed, I'm sorry, it'd be on this side, when the slide is fully closed that bar can move up, allow the trigger to function, and you can fire. Well, the Azard didn't, uh, didn't bother with that. So if, it, <laughs> if you manage to figure out a way to get it to fire out of battery, there's nothing mechanically that's going to stop it and keep you safe. So the next thing to take a look at is just how much variation there is uh, amongst these guns. They were all basically handmade, hand fitted, and, uh, and so there are changes between all of them. So a couple things that we can take a look at are, for example, uh, the profile of the trigger guards here are very much different. Serial number 13 here, the very earliest one that we have to take a look at today, actually still has a grip safety in it. Now the grip safety has been pinned uh, to make it non-functional, and by serial number 28 here, 28, uh, they had just gotten rid of the whole concept of the grip safety entirely. So that concept certainly changed. If you look at the checkering on the back strap, you can see that it's definitely not perfect. Um, there's a lot. This was obviously done by hand, and leaves a bit to be desired. That being said, the controls on the first pattern here are actually pretty darn good. They have this really big manual safety that operates pretty easily. Um, the sights are actually quite large and usable. A big old half round front sight, and a nice big notch for the rear. That's better than a lot of other guns at this time period. And of course it handles very much like a 1911. So if it weren't for the questionable mechanics of it being direct blowback, this would have been a quite nice handgun. Um, like I said, chambered for 9mm Largo. Uh, they have 8 round magazines, uh, 8 plus 1 in the chamber if you want to do that. So it occurs to me we didn't look at the, the markings here. Uh, we have Izard, the name of the, the model, and then Caliber 9LL. These are 9mm Largo, however they're marked LL um, as an abbreviation for the word YARG, L-L-A-R-G, which is the Catalonian dialects version of Largo, or Long. Uh, and then Barcelona, where the guns were manufactured. The opposite side of the slide has the serial number, which has this very optimistic seven digit configuration with basically all leading zeros. Uh, none of these, the highest recorded serial number of these is uh, 207. So yeah, they didn't need all those leading zeros. And then uh, pressed into the grips. So first off, this checkering is not actually cut into the grips, it was pressed in. And that's certainly a lot faster and easier to do than, than, than cutting. It does have a couple of downsides. Uh, if the wood swells from moisture, those uh, pressed areas will kind of soften. Um, the wood will start to come back up, and it's not as durable or as deep as actual cut uh, markings. That said, on this one we still have a really nice clear uh, crest on the side, or shield on the side, and that is the, the city emblem of Barcelona. You can actually see on this particular example the left grip panel is in really pretty nice shape. The right grip panel, which is the one that you would have your hand on all the time if you were uh, shooting it as a right-hander, that one is really quite heavily worn and much less distinct. Now early in production they made a whole bunch of changes to the gun. And so there are actually two different uh, series of these guns. They were manufactured with separate serial number ranges. So we have the first pattern and we have the second pattern. The obvious easy distinction, the second pattern has this extended uh, barrel bushing on it. It actually has a longer slide and a longer barrel as well. Um, the slides extended just a couple of millimeters, but then they added this very distinctive thing. A number of other changes that were made along the way, they reprofiled the back of the grip. Uh, they actually changed the way they manufactured the frames. These early uh, first pattern guns have a solid frame, and the later ones have a two-piece frame. So I'll pull the grips off in just a moment and show you that. They also changed, you know, some of the stuff was fairly minor, like they changed the embossed uh, design on the grip panel. So 
I think this is the best condition one that we have here today to take a look at. And this is now uh, the shield of the Generalitat de Catalunya, instead of the city of Barcelona itself. So by pulling off the grip panels you can see that this is one contiguous part, where on the second pattern guns there's a big ol' line right there, and the front and rear pieces of the frame are actually pinned together. So that was a major change in the manufacturing uh, of the guns. This transition from the first to the second model included a lot of other changes as well to almost every element of the gun. So you can see that the sight configuration changed. The second pattern is actually much less usable, in, in my opinion. Uh, that rear sight is much smaller and a lot harder to use. The thumb safety got substantially smaller. Now if I hold these together so they're nicely lined up, you can see at the front that the second pattern slide is slightly longer, uh, and then of course the barrel is substantially longer. The barrel is, I think, about an inch longer. We can take this extended barrel bushing off. So the barrel itself is full length here, and then we have this bushing. The rationale for the knurling on the bushing is completely unknown. Um, and in fact, the the reason for having an extended bushing at all is completely unknown. This isn't a thread cover or anything like that, um, it's just what you see there. The back strap design also changed, so the first pattern has this kind of crude checkering on it, the second pattern has uh, just vertical striations, vertical lines. And then even within second pattern guns there are differences between different second pattern guns. So these two barrel bushings are obviously a little bit different, in, and not just in one place, but in several dimensions. So this base thickness is different, this uh, reduced diameter thickness is different, the length of the knurled section is different, uh, the overall length of the, the bushing itself is different. So this one has a little more barrel sticking out because the bushing is a little bit shorter. You can see right there even the front sights are slightly different, the top one's a little bit narrower than the bottom one. The rear sights are similarly different. Um, this one's much thicker. They both have the same very small rear aperture, or rear notch, uh, but not quite the same. And the slide serrations are different. Uh, it's the, they're the same width and there's the same number of them, but on this one they start at the rear sight, where on this one they start back behind the rear sight. There's a difference in the ejection port cut as well. So the first pattern guns all had this uh, extra square notch at the back, they got rid of that. Uh, by, well this is serial number 125, this is serial number 80 in the second uh, series. The hammers are slightly different, so I think you get the idea at this point. Um, these are all hand produced, hand fitted guns, and they show a substantial amount of variation. And lastly, um, on a few, certainly not all, but a few of the second pattern guns, instead of being marked Isard, they are marked Tardeas, uh, which is a reference to um, J. Joseph Tarradeas, who was uh, the head of one of the weapons production committees uh, for the, the Republican military. So he was involved in the procurement and manufacture, or, or maybe they just wanted to try and uh, butter him up by putting his name on the guns. I, I think if it was me personally I'd rather my name not be on this particular design, but uh, they went ahead and did that on some of these. So Izards in general are quite scarce to find. When you do find them, you typically find them the most like this gun. So this is the latest production one in this batch, this is number 125. It doesn't have the notch cut in the ejection port, and of course it is the second pattern of gun with the longer barrel and uh, barrel bushing. So this is serial number 80, slightly earlier, which does still have that square cut in the ejection port. Not surprisingly, these things were of course rejected by the Republican Army, and that's why there were so few of them made, and I, I'm very confident in saying I would reject these things too if it were uh, up to me. I might consider trying to give them to my opponents, <laughs> perhaps, uh, but that's what ended production. And by August of 1938 production had ended on these, uh, Barcelona actually fell to uh, the Nationalist forces in January of 1939, and that was definitely the end of uh, production of pistols there. So uh, if you would like to know more about these guns, or some of the other 
uh, interesting firearms of the Spanish Civil War, or just Spanish handguns in general, uh, the reference I would strongly recommend is uh, the book on Astra Pistols by Leonardo Antares. Uh, he also has one I pulled out on Star Pistols as well. For information on the Azards, the Astra book is the better of the two, but there's a lot of good stuff in both of those. So I'll have links uh, to both of these in the description text below. Definitely check them out if you're interested, and thank you very much for watching.